I started painting and drawing, when I, well, drawing mostly when I was a little kid. Uh, I was, uh, I had some respiratory problems when I was a child, so I was sick a lot. And um, you didn't have TVs in your room then. Uh, so I had some drawing paper and some pencils and I would just draw, I'd copy cartoons out of the paper, uh, that kind of thing. And uh, so that's, that's how long I've been doing this. Since I had done it when I was a kid, uh, later on I, I started doing it and people liked my stuff and I started selling some of it. So I just want a little lighter there. And with traditional art or music for that matter, uh, here's a set of protocols you have to do. And then you learn from those and here's another set and you combine those and then you keep going on. Uh, people don't have to do that really anymore. And so it's, the, it's really the learning uh, experience that was uh, very important to me. And also you want to like sort of liquefy the whole area that you're going to work. Um, that usually will help. So we'll put like, a very, again, a very thin coat on everything. Well, I came to Beaufort uh, because two of my cousins moved down here. Uh, they initially moved up to Charleston, but I liked it here, so I stayed here. I was a professional illustrator. So as I tell people when they ask me, uh, I was in every magazine from like Penthouse to Ladies Home Journal. So, and I worked at advertising agencies as well for, you know, uh, various uh, companies, Subaru, United Artists, uh, several other. Um, I was also, and still am, a portrait artist. A couple of years ago, during COVID, uh, the art, uh, uh, the uh, rather the uh, local college here uh, had a show on paintings made during the COVID pandemic, and so uh, that was the theme. So I decided to make one, um, and I do again sort of pop art stuff. So this is. Uh, a bunch of 60s, uh, sort of a, this kind of background would be like you'd see on, on a TV game show in the 60s or something. And, uh, and the girl is uh, screaming, obviously. Uh, and again, uh, I, I, um, I've done a series of paintings with sort of, the faces are kind of on the, uh, they're, not, they're not normal color, they're like purple, basically. So a lot of purples and uh, I've done several paintings like this. Um, and she's screaming, and the uh, so this pattern of these of these uh, ovals, it kind of represents the bacteria of the COVID, uh, and of course she's screaming, um, and the actress uh, that this photo is, I forget her name. Her father started the uh, actor studio, and uh, again, '60s actress, and um, so what I did for a lot of this is uh, for the edges. In other words, since there's there's so many edges to blend the hair into. I didn't do that. I sort of made it uh, a, a little highlight area all the way around, uh, which sort of pops her out a little bit more uh, from the complex background. Uh, also, I um, again, during COVID, you order stuff on to send you. And the canvas I ordered was a little rougher than I'm used to using, so this took many layers to get it right. And, uh, but it's a fun piece and uh, people like it. Since I was also, in, you know, an illustrator and in advertising, uh, I was always interested in that stuff. And so most of my work is about, um, is about commercial art, is about, and is about uh, uh, basically about advertising and the effects of advertising on people. And I would see, you could see that all the time with people. And, uh, so that's what I started doing. And that's why I sort of got into more of like a pop art type thing and, and creating those kinds of pieces. Um, so, you know, that, that was basically the, uh, the incentive was to sort of reporting kind of like making a, a visual, uh, you know, allegory to what's going on in advertising or what's going on as far as how people are affected by advertising. Some of my stuff is kind of comical, and so it's done in kind of a humorous fashion sometimes. When I was an illustrator, I did mostly caricatures. Uh, some were pastels, but some were oils. And uh, here's one of Britney Spears. And you might recall one day she sort of decided to shave her hair off. 
and uh, she had two kids at the time, and she did have a red sports car like this. And uh, so I just made her at the beach, and she's kind of driving. And uh, the car tipped a little bit. Uh, one of the children flew out as long as well as her uh, wine bottle and glass. And uh, as the hair comes off, one of the children obviously grabs some of the hair and said, what are you doing, mommy? And uh, uh, that's basically it. Um, this is oils, again. And um, uh, I put, you know, kind of a beach scene uh, in the background. Um, when, sometimes when you do an illustration, notice all the, all the edges do fade out this way uh, when they, they have more of a, uh, a choice of where they crop. Um, again, some of the other pieces that I uh, was talking about earlier, uh, this is done, uh, you know, on a very, uh, uh, well, basically all washes. And uh, some areas even, there's some pencil, it's the paint so thin where the doors are. You can, I don't know if you can see that, there's, uh, there's pencil there actually for the door opening. Um, a lot of people think it's airbrush. I taught airbrush, among other things. But uh, this is not. Um, all of the illustrations I did was, uh, all the illustrations I did were uh, rather uh, uh, done by hand, which is, you know, again, as digital stuff comes up, uh, unfortunately, that's there's less and less people doing that now. Um, and uh, so, you know, I like any caricature, the head's larger than the body. I do pastels, I do oils, I do oil pastels as well. I'll explain what each of those are. Obviously, oil paints are, you know, oils with turpentine. Um, and I do layers, basically. Uh, sometimes I'll be more expressive, but uh, like the painters from the Renaissance or whatever, uh, you know, you do various layers of things. And, and uh, so it looks, a lot, it looks a lot brighter eventually because you've put, uh, you know, it doesn't get mixed with the other paint. You get sort of... Uh, sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, uh, diffused, if you will, into other colors. Um, so uh, that's how I do my oils, uh, generally. Although once in a while I will do something more expressive. And again, uh, painting face, there's many, many colors. Uh, obviously a large range of color in general that people are. And uh, so, uh, what's interesting is the shadow areas are different colors for people of different color. And uh, and so what I'm going to do is just add a little curve there. And almost immediately, you might be able to see she's now smiling and where she wasn't doing that before. Just add a little curl there. So people think you have to, when you paint something, you have to make them like do a full grin or something like that in order to, no, it's just a little subtle, uh, a little subtle area. Uh, you can increase this a little bit. And again, the very small amount of paint I'm putting on here, which is which changes her expression completely. And uh, I may, uh, and as hopefully you can see, she's now smiling when she was just sort of passive before. Um, I may brighten up some things. May brighten up uh, just a little bit. That looks nicer. Oh, and by the way, here's, you know, basically the reference shot I used. And notice neither one of them are exactly like this. Uh, when you shoot something, um, you may not get the exact likeness uh, that you would 
that you actually kind of wanted. So it's basically this shot, but you notice I tipped her head a little bit. I turned around, I took some things from there. So it's, it's sort of a compilation of, of both, uh, both reference uh, photos. I just noticed something else I'm gonna change a little bit. I believe the shadow area should be a little darker than here. Makes the head a little rounder. And again, notice everything's, nothing's very sharp. Uh, as I used to tell the students, uh, when in doubt, fuzz it out. Uh, that's because you don't want to make things uh, very sharp. Uh, it, it looks bad. It doesn't look right. And again, this is kind of how I paint very, you know, very uh, thin layers. Initially, the layers are, are, you know, a little more washy. Okay. And we're going to probably make this a little softer right here, the edge of her lip. Yeah, that's key, by the way. Uh, if, if, if any woman, she's got lipstick on, uh, make that edge soft. Um, it, it, this way, it doesn't it doesn't pop too much. Um, now, with that, I may uh, I may make this area just a little darker. And again, the good thing about using washes is that you know uh, you've already preset the color if it. If it's been uh, lightened or darkened by some other color, you can always go in and sort of wash the actual color in there. And that might look a little nicer. Yeah, so hopefully you can sort of see that difference. And again, she's smiling now with just the little minor changes. Soften that up a little too. Uh, again, another thing uh, doing a portrait is, uh, again, I would say no hard lines. And even if people are getting older or whatever, they want to be depicted as maybe how they used to be. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, that's part of it too. So you can sort of uh, soften things up. Um, as far as pastel. Uh, as a, I used, I did a lot of pastels as an illustrator, caricatures, in fact. And one day I discovered this stuff called ampersand board because, because as a pastel artist, if you're doing this and you just go, you might m mess up the paper literally with a little bit of saliva. It'll eat up the uh, glue and stuff like that. I found this stuff called ampersand board. They still make it. And it is, um, it comes in various colors and it is marble dust mixed with the gesso. This stuff, I could do anything to it. And you could make a couple of mistakes and erase it. You can never erase pastels on traditional uh, pastel paper. This is a pastel. And it's a very complex pastel in a lot of ways. And it's somewhat, more than somewhat surrealistic, really. It's more of a surrealistic piece. Um, uh, you know, the, uh, there's some sort of stuff coming up from the, from the ground and uh, these two uh, these two skulls are actually alive, and uh, they're they're laughing and uh, having a good time, and so is the young lady, um, and uh, so even though you know, so you can see traditionally uh, that's what the you know the pastels you can see through the board there a little bit, so you can see that it's pastel. Um, the area for these sort of psychedelic '60s uh, sort of images I put in here. 
that was tougher. You, you know, on the preliminary, you have to figure everything out where it's going to go. That's underneath there a little bit, and uh, some things are floating up outside of uh, that skull, and, and you know, um, all these things, uh, creating all this stuff like this, it takes a great deal of time. And uh, also, again, with pastel, you've got to be careful. Uh, even on the uh, pastel board that I'm using here, which I had uh, talked about before, uh, if you can't make too many mistakes or the, uh, it starts to become uh, too smooth to grab the uh, pastel. So you have to be very careful as far as what you're doing and where you're doing it. So it has to be pre-planned. You can't, you can't be sort of ab abstract with this uh, because, and, and control it because, again, if you erase it more than a couple of times, it'll, it'll still it'll become a little too soft for to grab the pastel properly and even if you get it to it won't be consistent from area to area uh, so that's an important thing to consider um, and again uh, the uh, the sort of uh, uh, traditional clouds up there with with these sort of weird things coming up and she's got something in her hair that's kind of strange and you know I I'd combined all this stuff and uh, uh, from from stuff that I've found and actually uh, I used a model for that one that was someone I knew and um, uh, this was you know again getting this to look uh, like chiffon and getting the skulls to look a certain way so you have to uh, manipulate the pastel in a certain way uh, for each area uh, that's how I do those and also I'll do what are called oil pastels and oil pastels are similar to regular pastels they're kind of like crayons if you will uh, they, uh, the cool thing is you can get some turpentine and mix it. So you're using a pastel, you can get some turpentine, mix it, and the, uh, it becomes an oil. It becomes oil paint at the same time. So you've got two different, you can have several different looks. Uh, maybe throw in some uh, Prismacolor pencils or whatever, maybe for sh little sharp areas and stuff. So uh, that's an interesting form as well. You know, people are used to watching uh, Bob Ross on TV or something, and they think that's how you paint. Like you can do a whole painting in a half hour. Yeah, you can, but you can't. You can't paint a face in a half hour. And um, that's painting a face is really the test of an artist, in my opinion. The process is not dissimilar to what I used to do uh, when I was an illustrator. In other words, um, what you had to do is you, you know. All artists, uh, not all artists, but some artists do this. Some artists just, just go and paint impressionistically. Um, but as an illustrator, I had to come up with the layout first, where everything was, because on the magazine cover, there's going to be a title and several other things. So I'll do a, uh, a preliminary first. And uh, then for these larger paintings, I would project the preliminary uh, with a opaque projector. Um, and I still have them in the back, but uh, I now have a digital projector, which is a lot easier to use because uh, you can just take a shot of it. And uh, they're really very bright too. You can actually uh, paint while, the, uh, while it's on uh, if you wanted to. So um, that's, that's one plus with new technology, depending on the client or depending on what I feel like doing. I'll actually do a preliminary in Photoshop. That's good for uh, figuring out colors and stuff like that because they're already there. Uh, I hadn't done many like this and haven't done many since. It's somewhat more expressionistic. You can see the, uh, uh, you can see the thickness of the paint. And um, the, uh, this girl's sort of uh, in a quiet mood, uh, maybe contemplating something. And uh, she's probably been sitting there for quite some time because the sun's starting to come up. Um, so I, I, uh, I like the, um, uh, and I knew this model as well, uh, the, um, I like this sort of thing, like it's sort of, it's brighter and then there's the, uh, there's the mirror. So it has sort of movement to it. Your eye's going to go from the top down. So, uh, that's one thing I just tell the students, you can control actually where people look and, uh, and you can control, actually, which is a good idea. You want to do that. You want them to, uh, sort of look at the painting. Uh, in a certain way, Some, sometimes, not all the time, but uh, I, I think that's, uh, that's part of it is, now you could look at the person and then go up that way too, but you're going to move your eyes around on this particular piece because of that. Uh, also, reflections, uh, you know, doing reflections are uh, an interesting thing to try and do.
um, you know, to make it look like a mirror uh, and not, uh, uh, you know, not, so you have to, you know, you have to sort of do everything mathematically. That's doing that, that's doing that, that's doing that. Uh, so that's, that's an interesting thing to do. Um, uh, I have a sort of green mode to it uh, because it's, green is kind of, a, you know, a cool color. One of the cool colors, purple, blue, uh, and uh, and it, it just gives it kind of a uh, a, a soft uh, sort of uh, feeling, even though it's not one of the warm colors. Uh, so green somewhere in the middle. But uh, the, the cool thing about it is, again, it, she she's sort of uh, in a quiet mode. She's thinking. Perhaps she's been sitting there all night because the sun's starting to come up, and so something may be troubling her, or she's thinking about something. And uh, that was the purpose of the piece. And, and this is a very popular piece among people. I, I've kept it myself because I, I have it exhibited in my house. But uh, a lot of people were interested in it. I have a studio in the back of the, uh, about the, back of the house. Um, when I purchased this house about 10 years ago, uh, apparently, I think the guy that lived here, uh, I think he repaired boats, I believe. So he had a pretty big addition on the back of the house, which is great for a studio. And, um, uh, so that's where I, I create my work. The most prestigious thing I did was I did a, a portrait of um, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King and uh, was presented to Mrs. King. And uh, I did portraits for the Royal Shakespeare Company and for various other people. And I was, uh, I was a college instructor for many years. I received Educator of the Year and uh, several other uh, awards. I was also head of the Teachers Union for a very long time, which is not easy. <laughs> Um, and so those are, those are basically the uh, things I'm uh, most proud of. This piece I had at the Art Association, and um, it's, uh, I found a picture of an Edwardian girl on the beach. Uh, Edwardian Mary would be the late 1800s. And um, uh, the, the, the part about this painting that was most difficult was getting all these uh, uh, little patterns in here. Uh, that was... That was annoying and uh, uh, so again it took you, you do it in layers um, uh, sometimes you can start out with uh, with acrylics and do and do the first layer but I generally do oils and uh, so uh, so the girls sort of looking and I added the bird uh, and I you know I changed the beach a little bit and changed some of the shadows and uh, changed some of the colors and uh, you know so to match the uh, so the, his shadows kind of match the uh, girl and um, so that's, uh, and, and it's also a, uh, it's also so, sort of showing that, uh, that animals in general, birds especially, of course, when someone shows up, they leave. I don't care if it's a bird or a squirrel. If a human shows up, they run away from us. And uh, uh, so that's, that's the main uh, gist of this thing. And, uh, and that, that's, uh, again, the amount of layers it took to do that. Um, also, when you're on a deadline as, a, as an artist, or as an illustrator, certainly, uh, there's this stuff called alkyd paint, A-L-K-Y-D, and it mixes with the oils. And uh, it, what it does is it dries overnight. So you can mix it with the oil paint, like, a, like reds take forever to dry, several days. But if you mix the alkyd in with it, uh, it dries in several hours. Uh, so uh, that's a big benefit if you're trying to, you know, this one I was working on uh, close to the deadline of, of getting the new work in. And uh, so that, that really does help. As if I could give somebody advice that's an oil painter uh, and they wanted to get something done quickly for a client, use some alkyd paint as well. And, uh, and so I've, I've done a couple of these, uh, this sort of uh, look with uh, the Edwardian girls on the beach. Uh, you can find pictures like this. I had to put, make them in color uh, because usually they're black and white. So, uh, but the, they are, there are, if you, if you Google Edwardian girls on the beach, you'll find old photos and it's, it's actually kind of fun. I'm a member of the Art Association. That's about it though. I mean, I don't, uh, I'm not in any of the galleries or whatever. Again, cause I'm, I'm retired basically. And I'll do an occasional portrait, of course, if someone wants me to, or if someone wants to buy a piece, they see one of my pieces. In this area, most of the art that's uh, sold is uh, is basically the flora and fauna. 
you know, it's the, the marsh and the birds and that kind of thing. Um, if somebody's young and they want to try and do that kind of work, that would probably sell for them. Uh, you know, as far as doing pop art, that kind of thing. Generally, figurative work doesn't sell enough for uh, somebody to make a living. And uh, uh, that's why I started being an illustrator. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, people buy. Now, in the old days, I remember uh, watching old movies and they would buy art based on the accomplishment of uh, the artist. Uh, you know, perhaps he was uh, well known in New York, had whatever, uh, that kind of thing. Now they just, people just buy stuff to match their couch. <laughs> I hate to say that, but that's really kind of what goes on. Uh, so that's what I would suggest if somebody was going to actually try and do this.